ladies and gentlemen welcome back to boxing with tt how are y'all doing today i hope y'all had a great week i hope y'all had a good weekend i was actually giving y'all some time to see if y'all could get in some social games i see that a lot of y'all not so it's cool we gonna move on with mr uh james j jeffries aka the boy we make call okay but before we begin thank you to my viewers the comments the subscribers Keep on rocking with me, and I'll keep on rocking back with y'all. So let's get into this video. Mr. James Jackson Jeffries, or Jam Honey. He got a whole black man name. Mm -hmm. Anywho, he was born August 15th, 1875 in Carroll, Ohio. His father, Alex C. Jeffries, is a, um, a minister, and he's also a farmer on top of that. Miss Rebecca Boyer and him go on to marry, and then they go on to have between six and eight children. It is stated that James is the sixth child of the pack. Okay, and when um they turn six, when James turns six, the family decides to move to Burbank, California. Okay, now as a teen life. Mr. Uh, James ain't lazy, honey. He's he's out here. He wants all the coins. So he decides to be a manual labor worker. And then he goes into the local mines. And then from mining, he decides that he wants to shovel coal for the famous Santana Free Railroad, okay? Um, and then he goes on to working as the Boyer Maker. So this is why the Boyer Maker pops out, all right? And um, <laughs> he's a busy man, all right? He, but it's obvious that he does anything that has to do with metal. And it's stated that his physique, because he works so hard, his physique is popping out, okay? He has an awesome physique and he stands at six and a half, all right? He stands at six and a half and at the age of a tender 16, this boy, because he's not an adult yet, he's a teen. This teen is over 200 pounds. Okay, in his free time, he enjoys to race, he enjoys wrestling, and um, he boxes among his friends at a local gym. Nothing, nothing too serious though, okay? And then, um, September 19th, 1895, he catches himself a little breaky, whatever, because Mr. Hank Griffin, mm -hmm, our great Hank Griffin, um, he's looking for a victim, honey. And his friends, James' friends, is like, oh, mm -hmm. he wants some smoke. <laughs> oh, okay. We know who to go get. We know who to deliver. This, James is at home minding his business, honey. He is relaxing on his day off. He is chilling. His friends decide, we're going to go get James. We're going to his house. They knock on his door. They go get, go, they go get him. They're like, James, 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 like, it's this dude out here popping buku smoke. He wants smoke, so we going to give it to him or not. And at first, he's like, yeah, no. Like, first of all, let's just put it out there. James is not a pro at this time. He, like I said, he just boxes for fun among friends. He's never competed in a serious bout, okay? We have Mr. Hank Griffin, the champ, okay? Oh, I hope he wasn't a champ, but <laughs> he is a pro boxer, all right? And uh, James is like, you know what? Whatever. They go and they get into it. And at first, I ain't going to cap. Griffin is beating the brakes off of James, okay? He is delivering. He is making him look like a whole fool out there in the streets of uh, California, and he catches one good lucky hit. And that one good lucky hit changes the whole dynamic, dynamic of the the uh the little match that they had going on. Um and he beats him. He beat he beat Mr. Hank all up. <laughs> he then later on that week or that next following day, he returns back to work and he's like I don't have to really be doing this. I could make way more money and 
I could be doing less work. Why am I beating my body up? Let me go ahead and get me a trainer and get me a boxer and yeah, we going to make what's up. Now, mind you, once again, he was already doing this in his spare time for fun. So he already knew the rules and what to do's and what not to do. So he already had it already lined up. All he had to do was just go talk to somebody to talk to somebody to get him through the door. And this is exactly what Mr. James does. So in the midst of it, he has a manager by the name of Mr. William Brady. And then he also gets him a trainer. And one of his brothers, uh, Mr. Charles Jonathan, takes um the name of him as well. And his name is, his in-ring name is Jack Johnson. I mean, Jack Jeffries, okay? So now we're going to jump into his boxing career. And y'all know me. Y'all know I'm only going to give y'all about a good 10. And that's it. And that's all, folks. So, um, I'm not going to mention the Hank because you guys already know about the Hank one, okay? So, we have another guy by the name of Hank Lorraine. Hank Lorraine was October 29th, 1895. And this is a defeat. Dan Long, July 2nd. 1896, Mr. James also um, defeats him. He faces Hank Griffin again, December 1st, 1896. He defeats him. Theroyd Van Burskirk, April 4th, 1897. This is also another win. Henry Baker, May 18th, 1897. This is another win. Guns Rolling. July 16th, 1897. This one becomes a draw. Gus Woolen, July 16th, 1897. This is also a, 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 okay, that's a draw. Dan Long, again, August 25th, 1897. This is the NC. So basically he wins because it's the N. Um, Joe, I'm probably going to butcher his name. I'm sorry, y'all. Joe Kunschke. November 30th, 1897. That's a draw. Joe Garter, February 28th, 1898. This is a win. And his last debut in ring match was Jack Johnson. July 4th, 1910. He loses to a TKO. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is in his record career. I found that he had 24 bouts. Very short period of time. He really wasn't too, I don't know. But he has 24 bouts and he has um, one loss and he has 19 KOs. So, Mr. James was definitely, definitely on bar. And they stated that he is, he is considered to be one of the greatest heavyweight in history. It's also stated that he was fearsome, he was intimidating, um, and that he was a prize fighter, but he was, um, that he would go on to fight nine bouts against um, future Hall of Famers, and these wasn't no slacky Hall of Famers as well. And then it's also stated that he had seven defenses against the championship. Boxing historian stated that Jeffrey's, uh, Jeffrey's combination of assets makes him the greatest um the greatest heavyweight boxer of all time so honey uh, mr james wasn't out here playing he wasn't he wasn't out here sucking and jobbing at all i know i like using the word for the old school ways <laughs> sucking and jobbing um jack johnson also stated that he is the best in any era there's no other era. it does not matter to mr jack johnson to mr jack johnson he is looking at James like James is a beast, even though he beat him. I can't wait to get into Jack, okay? So, in 1897, he spars with the, with the Jim Corbett. At this time, Jim Corbett is champion, okay? And Corbett is like, hold on, wait a minute. I like this kid. Let me introduce you to, let me introduce you to my manager. And that's exactly what he does. He introduces him to his manager and he dumps, James dumps his former manager and he becomes um, his new manager. With this new manager, he takes his career sky high. 
Gaha. He makes this man become what he, I don't know. I don't know what he did, but he makes his career pop out a whole lot more. He makes his time, he helps his career rise to the dang on top. Okay? So, what Mr. Brady does is, um, like I say, once he take control uh, from um, of his career, his, his boxing career, he makes it pop out and he makes it does what it does to the point where there is almost nobody else to defeat or to beat or is they? That's the trick question. Because in 1904, the champion uh, realizes ain't really no opponents left for him. So his last two battles would be either against Mr. Joe Janet or Jack Johnson. And uh, the champ is like, absolutely not. I am not fighting Jack Johnson. I am not losing. Sorry. <laughs> He's like, no, I am not fighting no Negro because I don't want the uproar or the uh, conflict. Basically, y'all, he ain't want no smoke with white America. Okay, that's just for the rest, right? So on August the 24th, 1904 when I told y'all that he had seven defense he's uh his defense his his defense was actually against Mr. Jack Monroe okay and then in 1905 honey James retired from in box um in ring boxing why because he refused to fight Jack Johnson okay um but he does referee and he also judges and he also becomes very very bold about not fighting against colored people when you are a champion because um, he publicly criticizes Mr. Tommy Burns for giving Jack Johnson a title strap, okay? And James stated that he would beat Jack Johnson, okay? And uh, at this time, y'all, Mr. Jack is the most hated, hated, he is the most hated black man alive. Okay, and honey, we ain't gonna get into it in this story right here, but y'all will understand why he is the most hated black man in America, probably in the whole entire day going work. Okay, so what wound up happening was Jack winds up getting the belt from Mr. Tommy Burns. When he gets the belt from Mr. Tommy Burns, white America is in an uproar, and they're like, Okay, we need you, sir. We need you to come back and come get this belt. And James is like, no, I'm not. I'm not fighting anymore. By this time, James is a farmer, honey, and he is 300 pounds. Mr. James ain't doing nothing. He is on his own barn, minding his own dang on business. That's just like when he was younger and his friends went and went to go get him for Mr. Hank Griffin. Uh, uh, I'm not boxing. I'm 300 pounds and I'm sitting here living my whole best life. Leave me the hell alone. And they was like, absolutely not. <laughs> what they wound up doing was they wound up getting a promoter by the name of Tex Richard. Tex Richard offers him $100,000. I'm sorry, $101,000, okay? And he says, I will give you this if you go ahead and you just beat this man, beat this Negro. And he's like, yeah, I'm kind of go key run out of money so okay <laughs> i'll do it i'll do it or whatever <laughs> by this time jack jack is young he is fresh and he he killed them the referee stopped the match mm -hmm. the referee had to stop the match so jim then states that he could never he can never beat Mr. Jack Johnson on his best day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in 1929, the autobiography comes out, right? And when the autobiography comes out, he states that he was doped. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you you said what you said, and then you ain't know that that Negro could rock like that. And now you was duped up. But they nobody believe that, y'all. The they just continued that real quick from the newspaper from the uh 
from the blogs and whatever they had out back then. Ain't nobody believe that. Uh, no, sir, you said that you could beat this man, and then he done beat you all up in your head, and the referee done had to stop the thing going out. So now all of a sudden, oh, I couldn't beat him. Now some some years later, now it's, oh, you was doped up. Sir, make up your mind. Which lie you want? So, anywho, in February 1923, uh, he volunteers for bankruptcy, and then he begins to tour as a um, a vandal fighter um, or a stage play. On stage plays, is like a little act for um, fighting or whatever the case may be. And then at 1899, his brother and him do expedition matches together. Which was, I think, was, I thought that was pretty cool. Because I told y'all, his brother was also boxing as well, okay? And then in 1939, the barn that he owns is actually used for multiple things. Um, this barn is used for uh, a movie, actually, a 1939 movie um, called They Made Me a Criminal. And this is actually shot at his barn, in his barn. And then he would also, um, the barn is across from his ranch. And all of this is all connected to boxing because there's a boxing gym and there's a fighting arena as well. And this is where he trains the young men at as well. So he never officially left boxing. He just couldn't continue on with boxing itself. So he still, still had love for the sports or whatever the case may be. Um... At 1947 or 1941, I'm sorry, Miss Frida um, Jeffries, his wife of 37 years, she was hit and killed by a car, which had to be freaking devastating. They do have, they did or do have a daughter by the name of Mary, which has to be freaking devastating. It was stated that it was only, it's only Mary. So, yeah. Um, and then... Uh, it stated that he held the belt from 1899 to 1905 and that he was also able to um, run 100 yards in less than 10 seconds. So he was kind of fast. I'm going to tone my eyes today, y'all. I'm just feeling like that. So this eye won't be the same as the other eye. I'm just going to try to play with this because I got me some new eye shadow. And I'm going to play with it real quick with y'all. Um... And then um, March 13th, 1953, at the age of 77, Mr. James passes away from a heart attack. Um, the barn was turned into um, a museum, but after a certain um, historian passed away, they removed it. Like, they knocked it down. It is in, like, 1960, which sucks because... That was a part of Mr. James' legacy, okay? And he is inducted into the Ring Boxing Hall of Fame in 1954. He is then inducted into the World Boxing Hall of Fame in 1980. He is inducted into the International Boxing of Hall of Fame in 1990. And it is stated that he is ranked to be the second of the all time and heavily okay so this peach is not given <laughs> so we're gonna slide right past that so yeah he is um number two in that rank right here okay personal opinion i think mr james did awesome for himself in his career um i'm not i won't call him scary jerry like he's i don't he's uh, I didn't. I wanted to be unbiased as heck, okay? Because I did not want to look at him like another. Uh, don't make me say his name, y'all, Mister Sullivan. Okay, I was like, no, he's not too. Long. He's not pulling that role right there. He's not pulling that stuff. I wanted to feel, or I wanted to believe that he was only doing this to protect himself because he understood how vicious and how mean white America could be towards their own people for doing this because hell he even did it himself to one of his white people okay when mr tom with mr tommy burns so i kind of wanted to be unbiased about it i did not want to look at him as another white man who didn't want to give another black person the opportunity 
because of his skin complexion. But the more he kept saying Negro and I won't do this and it, it just seemed like, are you really saying this because of the backlash or is that how you really feel about Negroes? Like, it kind of, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I will say that he did damn good for his career. Um, I just wonder why didn't he just go back to men or men, uh, to labor work? Um, or why didn't he open up um, uh, something like that? Being that that was one of his very first true loves. Um, he didn't get into boxing because of the... Sp I mean, he did, but it was more like his friends pressured him into the sport type-ish. Yeah, because if his friends would have never went to go get him, he would have never fought Mr. Hank Griffin. If the white America never went to go get him, he would have never be fought. He would never fought Jack. So I just feel like he just did to probably please other people. So why not just go for what you're used to? Why not just go back into doing something that you love, especially if you really don't have the money and you out here filing for a uh, bankruptcy, honey? That means you ain't got the money for it. So you need to just get back to work. Um, the passing of his wife, yeah, no, I think, yeah, that probably was had to be the hardest thing that he had to swallow. Um, of thirty-seven years, yeah, no. Like, that probably hurt him to his core. Um, I didn't see any of the alleged fears or any alleged kids. I just seen that wife and Mary. So, I mean, you can't say he was out here, you know, fooling around. As, as far as what I was able to pull up, he was a, a loving, faithful husband. Um, no, the only, the only, uh, the, the, the divorce, the, the divorce. The relationship stopped because she passed away. So, obviously, somebody was, you know, they had to be content in the relationship. And for you to lose your wife in that kind of way, it just sucks. I want to know who took care of the baby girl, though, Miss Mary, though. That's what I would like to know. Um, Yeah, I want to know who took care of her. Did he raise her full time or did he let, you know, Miss uh, Frida family take care of her? while he was still doing his thing that he was doing uh, in 1937? Or was she already grown? Because I didn't get any information on on baby girl. So I don't know what year she was born, uh, nothing like that. So this blue is scary. <laughs> I don't, I'm not too sure about who took care of her, nothing like that. Um, but I think that he did an awesome freaking job in that ring. And I mean... If I'm not being biased, I understand. You don't want to mess. You don't want to make your your people upset. Um, but do I think that you had to go that far as into Negro calling and things like that? No. Even though back then for them, it probably was just the norm to be like, oh, he's a Negro or she's a Negro. It probably was the norm for you to just out and say it and not mean you didn't have to be racist to call someone a Negro or anything like that. But I don't know. It just rubbed me like different ways. Like I just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. But as far as him, his, as far as him being an entertainer, kudos, kudos to you, sir. Kudos. So this is the story of Mr. James. J. Jeffries. I will be up for y'all with a new video. And uh, don't y'all go nowhere. Subscribe. Stay in tune. Like, share, comment. Because I'll be back. <laughs> and when I come back, we're going to talk about the most disrespectful <laughs> boxer of that time. Oh, yeah. I ain't got no chapstick. <laughs> we gonna talk about. We definitely gonna talk about Mr. Uh, Mr. John Jack, Mr. J Mr. Jackson. We gonna talk about him. He coming out next, and he walking around here giving people their accolades. Uh, Mr. Jack, you're coming up next. 
They're coming up next. So enjoy the rest of y'all day. I hope y'all have a good one. Take care. I will see y'all when I see y'all. Peace out.